My dearest brothers and sisters. This is Tunia speaking. I love you so very much. A number of light workers are frustrated that the sleepers aren't waking up fast enough yet. I understand this frustration completely. The awake have done their work to wake up, and now they are being held back and mocked and censored by those who haven't done their own work. It's true that if more people had woken up, things would be proceeding more quickly. With the sleepers, I mean those people who still largely believe in the narrative from the corporate mainstream media. Still, while it's entirely valid to feel frustrated with the sleepers, today I would like to invite you to simultaneously have a degree of compassion for them. Yes, it's possible to be able to see both perspectives at the same time. If you want a metaphor, you can think of it as being able to see the frustration that the awake have with the sleepers through one pair of metaphorical glasses, and through another pair of metaphorical glasses you can see that it's at the same time appropriate to have compassion for the sleepers. Recently the channel had listened to a song from Dutch singer Fruke Veenstra. The song is titled Groter Danek, Bigger Than I, and here is the English translation of its opening. Happy New Year! The world is burning. And I want to put out the fire. But the fire is bigger than I am. And I'm choking on. The time, time ticking. The time, it just ticks on. I think this is a very apt description of how the sleepers are feeling right now. I would like to thank Fruke for her vulnerability and her bravery to express this. This song was released during COVID times, but I think that to a lesser extent many sleepers still feel like this, deep down. And the sleepers are prioritizing comfort and normalcy because they're in a bit of a suppressed panic and they don't feel in control and they're trying to get some psychological comfort through believing the corporate media and through calling the awake conspiracy theorists. Yes, in one sense they shouldn't do that, but in another sense many of them are in a psychological survival mode. Even normally moral and normally rational people don't tend to be as concerned with morality and rationality when they're in survival mode. As an extreme example, if you starve someone enough, they may start eating other human beings. Obviously they shouldn't do that, and obviously this is a hyperbolic comparison, but the point still stands that perfectly fine people can do some crazy things if they're in survival mode. When you realize that many of your sleeping brothers and sisters are in this state of slight panic and confusion and semi-depression and helplessness and psychological survival mode, then don't you also feel a sense of compassion for them? I certainly do. If the sleepers try to censor you, well of course I'm against censorship. But I still have compassion for the people trying to do the censoring, because they're in pain or fear or delusion. They wouldn't be trying to censor others if they weren't. In general people only treat other people poorly if they're in pain or delusion themselves. They wouldn't do it otherwise. In fact, a whole lot of dysfunctional and close-minded behavior in general is simply due to people being overwhelmed and underappreciated and scared and tired. A lot of Earth humans call people objective and unbiased if they agree with them politically, and call people biased if they disagree with them politically. Looking at this from the outside, this makes little sense, because that's not what those words mean. If you look at a dictionary, biased isn't defined as has another political opinion than myself. However this makes more sense if you realize that many people are so overwhelmed that they just desire comfort and rest and better living conditions, and they think that they can achieve this if only the opposite political side can be convinced or silenced. Or to put it another way, not all but much of Earth's mainstream politics is two sides of somewhat desperate, lonely, disconnected, fearful, struggling people thinking that they can't be safe until they convince or silence or depower the other side. Only once the other side is convinced or silenced or depowered will they stop feeling so lonely and disconnected and will stop having to struggle so much. From our perspective, it would be more rational for people to work on raising the consciousness of themselves and thereby all of humanity first. Because frankly, there is no really great political solution that can be found at the current level of consciousness. The left is right that implementing the right's political vision doesn't produce great outcomes at the current level of consciousness, and the right is right that implementing the left's political vision doesn't produce great outcomes at the current level of consciousness. However, the political solutions are available with a relatively small amount of higher consciousness, because higher consciousness is infectious. Raising the consciousness of humanity to the point where good political solutions become available doesn't have to take that long. 
This idea of raise your own consciousness first before spending a lot of time engaging in politics is just a specific application of our more general suggestion, raise your own consciousness first before spending a lot of time trying to change the outside world. Similarly, if something triggers you or generates so-called negative emotions in you, it's better to look inside first, before you look outside for someone to judge or blame. Now yes, the world does need high consciousness political actors, whether politicians or people who organize protests. It's not unspiritual to engage in politics. After all, politics is just the way on earth through which most societal decisions get made, so if you try to accomplish things or speak out against certain kinds of dysfunction, then it quickly becomes political whether you like it or not. You can't avoid that if you want to achieve change beyond the individual level. Personally, Hakan and myself don't have any resistance to making political statements whenever we think it appropriate. That said, we have done our own inner work first. If someone feels called to spend a lot of time engaging in politics, then we've established they should work on themselves first, however at which point in their development should they start spending a lot of time engaging in politics? It depends on the person, but in general, have your own needs met which will probably include having a pretty good life and a good relationship and good mental health. Have some experience in the real world, politicians who have never worked a regular job in their life tend to be disconnected from reality. Be close enough to unity consciousness that you understand that all other humans, and ideally, animals as well, are to some extent part of you. Also understand both political sides well enough that you are able to make an argument for the other political side that people of that political side would call a good argument, you don't have to agree with the other political side, but you should understand them. Understanding the other political side doesn't just make it likely that your policy proposals will be better, it also means that you'll be better at convincing other people. Most activists don't satisfy these criteria. Most politicians don't satisfy these criteria. Most people fiercely debating online don't satisfy these criteria. And hence, lots of political debate is on the surface level about immigration policy or tax policy or something like that. But underneath, it's often two people saying to each other, you need to either change your opinion or shut up, so that us civilized people can be safe and have a good life. You being on your current political course means that us civilized people can't have a good life. Naturally, such discussions aren't productive. So, it's good to work on yourself first before spending a lot of time engaging in politics. It's also good to have compassion for other people, including the sleepers, including the people with a so-called wrong political opinion. Finally, I want to congratulate you lightworkers. Remember Fruquier's metaphorical fire from the start of the message? This fire certainly is not bigger than you lightworkers are, as a group. In fact you're doing an amazing job at uplifting the consciousness of humanity, which will eventually lead to a love-based society and to this fire being put out. You will be free. I love everyone endlessly and unconditionally. Tunya.